if I was to identify myself, well, let's do pronouns first. I am he, him, he, him, his pronouns. I identify as a biracial, bisexual, cisgender woman. I would consider myself to be woman. I am black. I am she. I would identify myself as Muslim. I am proud. I identify primarily as a black female. Um, I also like to um, add that I am the descendant of kidnapped and enslaved Africans. Othering to me is when you marginalize people. When you decide, um, based on some misinformed concept of yourself, that you are the norm, um, that you are somehow superior, and anyone different from you is other. They're less than. Um, and the result is that you push them out and you push them down in the attempt to lift yourself up. Well, when I first came to Crossburg, I felt very lost because I felt as if I was like the only Muslim girl on campus. And because of that, I feel like that's really held me back from going out there and like being my true self. So I would say in order to find a sense of belonging, it starts with finding yourself in who you are. Um, you have to know what you like, what you don't like, what interests you, what doesn't. Um, and you have to get comfortable with yourself. From there, you're able to find people that are a lot like you or, or they're not. And I think that's what a lot of people struggle with because they believe that they're probably misunderstood or um, that a lot of people don't think like them or they don't think like others. So I would say one, definitely be comfortable within yourself and just put yourself out there. Um, there's always a lot of people like you looking for other people <laughs> as well. Have I always been comfortable with my identity? Have I always known my identity? No. Um, it took a lot of soul searching and really just research. And it sounds weird, like why would I look to Google for figuring out who I am? But it's really from a place of finding people who are familiar with it. Um, race was a big thing growing up in the outside world, not so much in home, because my parents made me very much aware of who I was and the challenges that I was gonna face, regardless if I was in an all white community or an all black community, regardless. But as far as introducing myself with with those labels, I guess, I feel like I'm trying to destigmatize the issues behind being of color or being of more than one race and normalizing like, yeah, people are cool with their sexuality. People are cool with who they are and it shouldn't be this huge, big taboo issue that's like, oh, well, no one needs to know your sexuality. They probably don't, but there could be anybody in this room or anybody at the school that's like, closeted about it because they don't feel that they can be open. Maybe not even being proud, just being open to know that, hey, you look like me and we have more in common than you might think. So I think it's just about making other people feel secure in themselves. The story I like to share is when I, when my husband and I were looking to purchase our second home, um, we found a house and we were told that our the potential neighbors didn't want us there because they had never had people like that before. That sense of otherness has never gone away. There are going to be haters everywhere. You know, there are going to be haters. There are going to be people who just don't want to be as energetic. There are going to be people that see your positivity and your happiness as too much. They're, they have them everywhere, even in my own family. You know, I have them. I help out with the athletic communications department um, here on campus, and I am the only female there. So uh, definitely within like a sports world, it's definitely male dominated, that field and the world itself. So it's kind of like challenging a little bit because you have to feel as if you have to prove yourself. I think sometimes it's funny when we have like these sports conversations or these sport topics and because I am like the only woman I kind of like sit in the back sometimes and let the men do all the talking but sometimes I just let them have that um, because I don't want to seem too outspoken. We need to check out on biases you know we need to realize biases are natural the every single human being has biases it's what you do with them that matters you know, do you recognize what your biases are and how it impacts 
other people as well as yourself. And so we need to do more self-work. We need to do more self-reflection. Because of the Muslim Student Association, I now know that like there's other Muslims here on campus that I can connect to and relate to things with. And knowing that there's other people that are the same age as me that go here and have gone through similar things in life from a religious aspect, that's allowed me to feel more connected with them as well. And it's allowed me to really express who I am as a Muslim here on campus. Say, so Reggie gonna be himself anywhere he go, how about that, okay? But uh, yes, I do feel like I can be 100% me. And the only reason I feel as though I can be 100% me is because I, I make the way for myself wherever I go. That diversity and inclusion is big here on campus, but then again, it's just like a checklist or checkbox, in a sense, just to kind of say that, yeah, we have this org here that um, is supposed to, you know, help minorities or help these people that are different than others, but they don't necessarily support it that much. These groups of like students that are considered like cliques here on campus. You have the athletic department, you have certain student organizations that only find themselves talking to students of the same race, of the same religion, um, of the same identity. And so in a sense, you don't really see those groups of cliques like merging together. It's kind of just like their own kind of like comfort zone, like safe spot to talk to a specific group of people. The, is the support there. You know, I can stand on the stage, but if I don't have a microphone, who's gonna hear me? If they don't turn the lights on, who's gonna hear me? If this is making sense, you see what I'm saying? So the stage is there, but is the support there? And um, the support, I feel as though they can step up a little bit more, you know? Um, they definitely give the space, you know, and the opportunity to, but you really have to work on encouraging the people to make them feel the best they can on their stage, on their platform, to be able to maximize their potential and convey their vision as best as they can. I really would love to see more participation and engagement across the board. I would love to see students, and I know it's COVID made it difficult. COVID really caused us to fall off track um, as far as student engagement. But if students are not coming out to all these programs, um, they're not getting the learning that is supposed to supplement what's happening within the academic um, classrooms. So I would, I would really like to see more of that. But I also would like to see more faculty and staff come to programming. Um, programming that my office and offices like mine put on, but also, you know, just a student org meeting is so important to students. It helps um, their sense of belonging, their sense of um, you really do care. I would definitely say that some advice to minorities is to kind of don't count yourself out. Um, just because we don't all look alike, we all are alike at the end of the day. We're all human. Um, humans aren't perfect. We all make mistakes. So don't discourage yourself. The sky is the limit. Um, keep striving for greatness. Overall, no matter your color, your creed, your character, I think the biggest thing that we all need to do here at Frostburg, whether you're staff, student, faculty, whatever the case may be, is be kind. And it sounds so cliche. It's like so overused. Um, but I think it's just simple. And it costs nothing to be kind. It costs nothing to just be polite. If somebody needs help, help them if you can. If you can't, be polite about it. You know, and I think we would get a lot further as an institution if we were all open to leading with kindness and leading with love overall. It's corny, but I think that's the biggest thing that we need here. I've been doing this work for 30 years, and I still learn something almost every time um, because things change, life changes, you change. Um, so it's a lifelong experience. It's a lifelong learning experience.